Hi there, I'm Janet Lynn. And I'm Will Zeilinger. We are coming to you from Long Beach, California. We are a married couple who write together and separately. Between us, we have 15 books, and yes, we are still married. We also write under E.J. Williams for our new series, International Mysteries. Our first book, Stone Pub, will be released in 2021. As published authors, we have spoken at several venues, such as BoucherCon, Left Coast Crime, L.A. Lit Crawl, West Hollywood Book Fair, Santa Monica Public Library, American Association of University Women, Glendale Public Library, and California Writers Club, Orange County. We've met so many authors over the years, and with the advent of Zoom, we thought we'd chat with authors that we know and love. Lita Sedaris. Lita's first stint after law school was a newbie lawyer's dream working as an entertainment attorney for a movie studio. She was one of two national winners of the Helen McCloy Mystery Writers of America Scholarship Award for her first book, Murder and Other Natural, Unnatural Disasters, Unnatural Disasters. Lita lives in the northern tip of Southern California with her family, rescue dogs, and a flock of uppity chickens. Welcome, Lita. Thank you. I, I listened, uh, the first question I have to ask you is uh, amongst uh, uh, the crowd here at Chatting with Authors, is that uh, people are trying to figure out that is your book cozy or is it not cozy? Well, that's a very good question, Janet. Okay. Uh, I would say the answer is yes and no. No. Oh. Because as you know, most cozies take place in small towns or villages. Do you consider Southern California a small town or a village? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's where my book takes place. My heroine is all around uh, Southern California. Mostly Los Angeles County, but she gets into trouble in Orange County as well. Um, is my heroine an amateur sleuth? Uh, sort of. As you know, most cozy uh, heroines either own a bakery, uh, and bed and breakfast perhaps, or some kind of small business. My heroine is a lawyer, as you mentioned, who works in a big movie studio. So she's in a big corporate setting when she does her job, when she's not busy hunting down, you know, bad guys and, and girls. There are animals in my books, like uh, in Cozies, there are dogs in, or a cat in each book. Uh, and um, she also knows her way around weapons very well. I don't know if Cozy uh, heroes and heroines necessarily use weapons like mine does. Do they have brass knuckles in their pockets? I don't think so. Or, her favorite weapon of choice is a Japanese throwing star used by ninjas. Uh, and she likes that the best because it's a weapon of distraction, not, not destruction. So all those things make her sort of, or make the book sort of a cozy. Perhaps it's a more action-packed type of cozy in a big city setting. So what you're saying rather, is that yeah. it's kind of in between uh, well, you, I'm just surprised at how many people, when I get reviews, say, oh, I just love this cozy mystery. <laughs> and, and then I get uh, actually a lot of male readers who say, I love this action-packed mystery. <laughs> oh, okay. and the answer is, it's whatever you would like it to be. <laughs> whatever works. Well, what made you decide to write mysteries? It's the genre I most enjoy reading and have enjoyed mm -hmm. reading since I was a youngster, I guess. Um, I've always been fascinated by the twists and turns and the red herrings, the clues. I remember standing outside my door just before I was published, maybe a year or two, and thinking, gee, I, I so badly want to write a mystery, but I don't think I can. It's so complicated. How do you mm -hmm. figure out these plots and where to put things so that they make sense? And so I, I really wanted to, but I 
definitely thought I couldn't. I happened to win a scholarship uh, to a writer's conference and I won the McCloy Mystery Award, uh, Mystery Writers Award as well. And so all of a sudden I thought, well, maybe I can do this. So I started writing. And um, it is a challenge to write. I'm sure you two know very well as you have your own series. Mm -hmm. But it's also, wouldn't you say it's so satisfying when you do reach those two small words at the end? Okay. Yes. <laughs> Big time. Big time come? satisfaction. Yeah. Yeah. Everything seems to somehow uh, fall into place. I don't know how, but it, it does. And it's such a wonderful sense of accomplishment vicariously when your hero or heroine takes down a bad guy or girl, because it's something we don't do. I don't know. I don't do it. Maybe you two do in real life. Something I'd love to see done more and to have power over even a fictional character who does that, I mean, that's an incredible feeling, isn't it? Was, even it's only on the page. Was there any author in particular who inspired you to, to write mysteries? Oh, I have many authors uh, who inspired me. I mean, you could start out with the pseudonym Carolyn Keene for the Nancy Drew series. Because oh, I remember, okay. mm -hmm. we've talked about that before, Janet. Mm, uh, yeah, because yeah. I was a Nancy Drew follower too. Right, who doesn't love a, a young woman who's fearless is highly accomplished and yet is courteous and fashionably dressed at the same time and drives a really nice convertible, a blue convertible car. <laughs> Every hard. girl's dream, right? <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. So I, um, that was something that influenced me. I also love the books of Janet Ivanovich because mm -hmm. they're just so yeah. simple and they're just, there's not much thinking involved. But at the same time, they're so enjoyable. I don't think I can get through a p plane ride without reading an Ivanovich book. Um, I also love Alexander McCall Smith, in particular, the Botswana number one ladies detective agencies. Oh, mm -hmm. yes. I read that. That's good. Every time I finish reading one of those, I have a little bit, of, little bit more wisdom that he somehow subtly tossed in there that applied to me. Mm -hmm. And actually, because he does that and does it so expertly, I've tried doing that in my books, too. In, for example, in my fourth book in the series, I write the Southern California Mystery Series, my fourth book will be released uh, October 20th. Mm, Slightly murderous intent. It's coming and, up. Yeah, I'm excited. Uh, in there, there's a scene where my heroine sidekicks, she has three sidekicks, but this particular one is her legal assistant slash former uh, security guard. And she says, my heroine, Corey Locke, gives her an assignment. She says, go and talk to this guy, uh, interview him. And she said, I, the sidekick says, I don't want to interview him because that guy always yanks my chain. <laughs> so my heroine says, you shouldn't be wearing a chain. And I thought, wow, that was actually a little bit of wisdom that I managed to throw in there, maybe thanks to Alexander McCall Smith. Yeah, that's true. Okay. How, how, tell me about your heroine. Is it a real life person? Uh, well, it's, and people always ask me, how much of you is in your heroine? Because mm -hmm. I, too, at once upon a time, worked in a movie studio. It was one of my very first, my second job, actually. I don't anymore. Now I run a legal nonprofit. But back in the day, I worked for a movie studio. There's a big difference between my heroine and I, and that is I never had to solve a homicide. <laughs> I had to solve them all the time. So that much is the same. When I write... I uh, look at the studio, I keep that in my mind when I'm putting her in different scenes and all the places that I've gone, she goes, but of course they're not as sedate as when I visited, a lot more things happen with her. We both lived uh, on the same street. She lives in Hermosa Beach in a cozy little bootleg unit a few blocks from the beach that she gets great rent for or pays good rent because the landlord is a friend of her mother's and she's possibly the oldest living flight attendant who's still <laughs> flying. Uh, so I lived on that street in a duplex as well. Uh, okay, the big thing with my heroine, which I did not have, is that her father is a, or was a late great PI. Mm -hmm. And so when her parents divorced and she was a, a teen, they spent weekends together, but they didn't do what most fathers daughter, and daughters did, meaning they would you know, go have lunch or go to the movies or do some activity together. No, she would take him, he would take her, his daughter, Corey, to crime scenes. And they <laughs> do crime scene investigations. They practice target shooting. He's the one who told her how to or showed her how to use all of her weapons. So 
that's who my heroine is. She, she has a lot of skills that you and I perhaps don't have. I, I don't want to speak for you two. Maybe you do have a, your own you know, set of illegal weaponry. <laughs> well, have, have, you <laughs> we'll done that. <laughs> have you shot guns before? I did once. Uh-huh. For the, I went to a, a shooting range and I shot it because it was for my first book. And it was a scene I was writing toward the end. And I wanted to see what it felt and what it, it smelled like, actually. And so I included that in the book because it's something I never could have used my imagination to figure out. Yeah, we took Janet to a, to a pistol range, an indoor pistol range, and let her shoot both a revolver and a semi-automatic. Wow. Because you know, the, the bullets stay inside a yeah. revolver, the, the empty I shells. I was shocked how heavy guns are. Well, and that re- Oh, my goodness. But I have to tell you, we both took a class in uh, lock picking and safe cracking. Oh, wow. Figured we're going to have to write about it. We might as well know how to do it. He's exactly. really good at picking locks, and I'm, I couldn't get it, you but I got, I got the safe cracking down. You have to <laughs> practice a lot. My heroine in this book uh, has to break into locks. This is book number two, Murder uh, Gone Missing. She has to break into many places. So rather than take a class, because I didn't know there was a class to take, I actually mimicked what she did. And I realized, yes, I can break into rooms. So <laughs> now a new skill I learned because of her. Uh huh. So it's amazing what you will learn while writing a mystery. And what you have to learn, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't. We don't know if you would want to take the lock picking class we did. It was in a really sleazy part of East LA. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it was. But it was a, a bunch of a bunch of makers. You know, guys guys who built computer things. And but they were also teaching these classes about mm-hmm. how to do that. And uh, well, so we whenever got- we watch television now, and they do it like. That you know, it takes a lot longer. It does. <laughs> but you know, we got some real cool characters from there. <laughs> Our future book, really cool. You know, I, I think you you said uh, uh, your heroine takes her mother out to uh, to crime scenes, and I'm visualizing my mother in a crime scene. And it, it is no way. <laughs> well, actually, <her laughs> Not father, my mother. Yeah. Oh, for sure. But her father is the one who actually took her to crime scenes because he oh, was oh. an investigator. Uh huh. So, and he didn't know what to do with her. He wasn't the greatest communicator, and they weren't very close, except when they were solving crimes together. Mm. And that's something that she is appreciative of, and she holds against him, too. Okay. Does she have, um, does she do these things mostly? I haven't read all of your books yet, but does she, does your heroine mostly, mostly follow things all by herself, or does she have sort of a group of friends that help out? Yep. Thank you for asking, because I would have forgotten to tell you, she has three sidekicks, three trusty sidekicks that appear in each book. One is her legal assistant, as I mentioned, and the legal assistant is Vera, and her dream is that the two of them open their own PI agency. But, you know, they would need a regular paycheck, so they haven't done that yet, although they might. Another sidekick is her best friend, sort of love interest, Michael, and he's actually a tech whiz. He's a computer science uh, co-dean at a well-known college that highly resembles Caltech in Pasadena. So he comes in handy a lot in, in terms of using iPhones or cracking into them or anyway, anything tech related he can do. And the other sidekick is a deputy district attorney that uh, Corey went to high school with. She actually went to high school with Michael as well. And they, she had a crush on him, one-time schoolgirl crush. She still seems to like her, but she is convinced she's moved on. But he comes in handy, too, because he actually has a lot of skills as well. So, you, you know, cozies do have links to people, cozy characters or the heroine or hero, that can fill in the gaps that they maybe can't. So in that sense, again, my book is a cozy because she does have these three sidekicks who fill in the gaps for her. Uh-huh. Yeah. Do these three sidekicks go with her to the crime scenes and, or follow her around? Uh, typically, yes. <laughs> okay. But yeah, they're always with her, I'd have to say. Or at least one of them is. She said, she said love interest. Yeah, yes. love so, interest. Oh, there's a little <laughs> romance in here, romance too. Romance here, too? It, yes, there's definitely a little romance. And it's, I have people who read my second book where the romance kind of heats up. Again, Murder Gone Missing. And I've gotten emails from people who say, I'm not going to read your book because I thought she liked Michael. Why is she kissing the other one? But I always tell them, just please wait to get to the end. Books need conflict. I can't just <laughs> so please just give the book a chance. And then this particular one who uh-huh. was a male actually 
said, okay, I got to the end. I really like this book a lot now. So I said, <laughs> <laughs> okay, because it ended the way he was hoping it would end. Uh-huh. Now, since we are not trained writers, it took us 10 years of going to classes and some of that, well, we are now, uh, but it just took us 10 years to find our voice. How long did it take you? Oh, gee, 10 years sounds like a, you know, a walk in the park. Oh. <laughs> so it took me a very long time. And also, I don't think I had the confidence to write. I didn't even try. I started out very small, writing maybe local articles and maybe more national articles, but they were very small, very short, 500 to 800 words. Mm -hmm. And so again, to write, I mean, this is a daunting task writing 300 pages, right? Or close to it. So then those awards that I won in the beginning, they really gave me the confidence and the motivation to try something more challenging. And I don't know if I would have maybe I mean I admire you two for doing without that but I don't know if I would have done it without a little bit of a boost it's always interesting especially I'm glad that we belong to a, a couple of writers organizations in in that we see well-known uh, published authors and find out that they go through the same sort of angst and frustrations and and lack of confidence even after they've got 50 60 books yeah. that, mm -hmm. that that we go through and we thought maybe it was just us but not, not that it's something to look forward to, <laughs> but to know that uh, it, the writing process involves that, and it's not something we're doing wrong. Right. Yeah. It's uh, well, we're on our we're beginning a whole new series, and we, between us, we have fifteen books. Oh wow! And, and, and every book begins with, "Can I write this? Or what am I going to do?" And then exactly. you outline. Go now. What am I supposed? You know, I know we'll do well, but it's always the very beginning of every book. You get that slight thing of, "Do I know what I'm doing? And can it happen?" And it always does. Every time, I agree. Yeah. But it's just a matter of if you can force yourself to plow through it and not be so worried. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because right. to me, I don't know if it's like this for you too, but the editing is not nearly as bad as pounding out that first draft. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah. That first draft is not a breeze at all. Now, are you a panster or an outliner? Well, I've tried both, but for the most far part, I write by the seat of my pants. With book two, again, Murder Gone Missing, I thought I was so good, I outlined it. I was so proud of myself. <laughs> then I started to write, and I thought, you know, this is so boring, I can't write like this. So I didn't look at the outline again, and I just, did, did it by the seat of my pants. However, once that first draft is out, I go through and I outline that so I can keep track of what's going on, the timeline, mm -hmm. what day it is, is it morning, uh, midday, evening? I need, to, I need to keep track. What is she wearing? Because I've had her change clothes in the same scene from a white dress to a black dress. I think little <laughs> details like that that we need yeah. to keep track of, I will outline. Speaking of time of day, do you find a time of day that you write better? Well, with my first book, I would get up very early before work and write. Then with my next books, it just didn't work for me. I, I work was on my mind, meaning my day job, and I wanted to get that out of the way. So now I work after the fact. I work at the end of the day. And I remember you and I spoke about this, Janet. You said that your, your brain was mush and you couldn't <laughs> write at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. But I have, I guess, trained myself to be a little bit more calm. So I <laughs> have some energy left at the end of the day, and I'm able to do it then. And of course, Will, there are weekends. Mm -hmm. That's when I do the majority of my writing. Do you? No, I write between six and eight every morning. Uh, I, I can't, and after that, life starts. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then it goes all over the place. And then at the end of the day, I, I just I just can't, I can't write. Now, he can write at night. He can write anytime. And you know, I can, shows too. Yes. <laughs> and I'm an outliner and he's a panster. So well, uh, it's like, you know, night and day here. But I think what happens is that we complement each other. You know, when, when I'm not out of it, he takes it at okay. night. <laughs> when we got, when we got seriously writing mysteries, though I found that you did have to outline. Like you said, you had to keep track of people, keep track of what they're doing. In fact, on the, the, the book that, we, uh, that we're working on now, we had, had to go and make a little family tree to keep track of everybody yeah. to see oh. who's related to who so that we could yeah. be I, accurate. Another question that has popped up from other people is that some people that have, have a lot of books, they're afraid of plagiarizing themselves such as the same names, the same location, same scenes, same something. scenes. Do you ever worry about that? Only recently, 
because I've seen, <laughs> did I already say this in my previous book or one of them? And in the end, I say, you know what? It works here or if it works here, I'm going with it. That's, mm -hmm. that's all I can do because honestly, there are so many little details and even outlining won't cover everything. Yeah, so that's true. Perhaps I have, Janet, and I don't even know it. Yeah. But at least I'm plagiarizing myself and not someone else. So it's okay. Yeah, that's a good thing. Yes, yes. We, we did screw up once and use the same name, two different oh. theories. But, but there was some... And I didn't know that until someone wrote a review. And, oh, my God. Yeah, I did but, that. But that, but that oh, wasn't okay. a mystery. It was, a, it was not a mystery. No, it wasn't a mystery. Was... One was a mystery and one wasn't. So You're, in good, still... you're in good company because I, I heard an interview with Stephen King who, where he was live and someone called in and said, you know, you had a piano in this scene and or something like that. It was just like a scene you had in like your second book. And there was like dead silence. He didn't say a word. <laughs> <laughs> it's embarrassing. It is really embarrassing when someone else finds it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, we do our best. Yeah, we do our best. And that's all you can do. Right. So uh, my question I ask all my authors, do you eat or listen to music when you write? I don't listen to music when I write. I can't. I need my mind fully on whatever is going on. I will wash the dishes in between, though, because that gives me ideas. Doing things with your hands can kind of mm -hmm. get the creative juices flowing. I don't eat while I'm writing, but I will get up many, many, many times to take breaks, and I'll have a snack while I'm taking that break. But huh. in all fairness, during that break, I'm thinking about what I'm going to write next. So it's always the mind's always on the writing, but I'll be doing other things. You may not think so if you see me wandering around the house straight. <laughs> no, Janet, too. Janet does dishes. It helps her to yeah. think. Dishes, watering the plants. I think it's with water, anything with water. Mm -hmm. We swim three to four times a week, and I always get great ideas when I'm underwater. Oh, <laughs> so I, there's awesome. something about water and me that we just communicate so well together. You, you and Agatha Christie, because she also said, there's a quote somewhere from her that says that her best ideas came while she was doing the dishes. So evidently it works. It does. And again, I'm, it's got to be the water. <laughs> Janet does, have, Janet does one, have one experience, though, that wasn't involving washing dishes. She was at a bookstore. And no, you were at the grocery store. What happened? <laughs> I was stuck on a scene. I could not figure. I knew, how to, I knew where I had to go, but I couldn't figure out how to get there. So after three days, I just enough. And I went food shopping. We didn't have any food. And I was at Albertsons. And I went to get, you know those big plastic containers of tomato juice? Uh -huh. and I went to reach and I dropped it on my, and it rolled and I got, I got, all of a sudden it came to me what I had to do, you know, <laughs> as I came back and I did, I wrote till three in the morning. And it was perfect. Wow. I mean, who knew I had brain cells in my big toe, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you never know where ideas come from. Absolutely. That's why it helps to change activities or change directions or go out into the world because mm -hmm. you never know what's going to hit you or you land on your toe that you could potentially use. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Now, did, did you say you have a, are you working on a new book now? I am, well, my, I have a new book coming out in October. Correct. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, it's the fourth in the, my Southern California mystery series. It's published by Level Best Books and it's, uh, the launch date is October 20th. And do you have another, another book coming out in the series after this one or is no. it the end? Uh, you know, I don't know. That's a good question. I would, I think I'd like to do another one. I, I'm not quite sure at the moment. So what's the name of your latest one coming out? Slightly Murderous Intent. Slightly Murderous Intent. I love your titles. They're so fascinating. Uh, you know what? I come up with the title first and then I write around it. But thank you, Janet. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> it opens in a scene in Santa Monica. Do you remember when we were at the Santa Monica Library uh, uh -huh. together? Yeah, we did a panel there together that was great but this opens in Santa Monica where she's at a celebratory dinner for her DA friend when of course she doesn't get served her meal but she gets something served a bit more dangerous <gasps> oh boy oh, oh, I gotta read it <laughs> <laughs> no that sounds that sounds fun thank you well we've had a great time speaking with you today we wish that we can get together soon and see people in person but this is next best. But Absolutely. We Thank you so much, you two, for doing this. Oh. So happy to be here. Thank you. So now, at the did, did I already say at the end of this, we'll have uh, your photo, and we'll have your website yeah. so people can find out more about your books. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay. Bye. 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 See you soon. Mwah. Thank you. Later. <laughs> Thank you for watching. We will see you next time on Chatting with Authors. Be sure to push the subscribe button at the bottom of the screen. 
Stay safe, everybody. Thank you.